Matt Stepp, Dave Campbell's Texas Football here at Memorial Stadium in Wichita Falls with my week three instant reaction. Uh, we start out in East Texas where uh, Todd Quick and the Lufkin Panthers notched themselves a huge win over top 10 ranked A&M Consolidated. It's Lufkin's biggest win in several years. They've struggled the last couple of years, but I think the Lufkin Panthers may be signaling to the rest of East Texas and the state that they're back with a 3-0 start. That sets up a district opener next week between two blood rivals, Lufkin and Longview, uh, to open up District 7, 5A Division I play. Uh, Longview, the number one team in the state in 5A Division I, had no trouble with Tyler Legacy tonight, winning 69 to nothing. Uh, Lufkin versus Longview next week, both of them 3-0. That should be a blast out in the woods. Moving up to 6A in the Houston area, how about Galena Park, North Shore, the Mustangs? Dominant over a good Spring Westfield squad, 55 to 25. John K's Mustangs uh, continue to be dominant and do great things. Uh, their star receiver David Amador, uh, the UTSA commit, goes down in the first play of the game with a, uh, you know, a serious injury where he had to be taken off in an ambulance. A uh, word is it was a precautionary only. Uh, but North Shore decided just to get the running game going, and Rashad Johnson and DeAndre Hardeman just ran wild against a really good Westfield defense. North Shore uh, was up 55 to 11 at one point, cruising to a 55-25 win. Um, they're probably going to stay number two in the state behind Austin-Westlake, but North Shore right now, no one has been more dominant against good teams than the Mustangs through three weeks of the season. Down in Class 2A, Shiner, uh, they escape in a top-10 showdown with Class 3A Poth, 22-21, uh, the Comanches win in, a, in an absolute war. Um, I think both both sides in that game leave feeling pretty good. Uh, Poth, um, they were ranked in the top 10, I believe number 6 offhand, uh, but we still have some questions about them. Were the Pirates for real? And I think they proved tonight they are they are a team that should be reckoned with in Region 4 in 3A Division 2. They get, they, they, they get a loss. They lose to Shiner by one, but I think they feel pretty good about themselves. They gain some respect in for Shiner. Uh, they've got things back on track. They're two and one on the year. Um, hard fought win over Post, but they get the job done uh, to improve to two and one. They'll probably remain uh, number two in the 2A Division One rankings next week. Um, staying in 2A Division One, moving back to East Texas. How about Terry Bussey and those Timson Bears? 54 to 28 over the number two ranked 3A Division II team, the Dangerfield Tigers. What a win for Kerry Thurwanger's ball club. The second year in a row, well, actually twice in three years, they go to a 3A Division II top five team and win on the road. Timson has made leaves no doubt right now as of today September 10th they are or September 9th excuse me they are the best team in 2A Division 1 at the moment they leave no doubt 54-28 over Dangerfield just impressive stuff from the Bears Timpson right now has got, has got a stranglehold on that number one ranking in 2A Division 1 I I'm, I'm I picked Dangerfield to win the game I wouldn't have been surprised if Timpson won but a Timpson blowout stuns me man the Bears what can you say? That, that is unbelievable performance from those guys. Uh, finally, we go up to the Texas Panhandle to close things out with my five key thoughts. A Canadian drops their second in a row, falling to Elk City, Oklahoma, 37-36 in overtime. Before you hit the, the panic button on the Canadian Wildcats, Elk City has an enrollment of about 550, which would make them a 4A Division II program in Texas. So they're a lot bigger than Canadian. Canadian pushes them, loses by a point on the road. I wouldn't hit the panic button just yet, but I've got my eye on Canadian. It's two losses in a row, and their defense has been has given up a lot of points the last two weeks, which is unlike uh, the Wildcats when they're really rolling. So um, not not ready to hit the panic button just yet on Canadian, but I'm keeping an eye on them. I've at least got the I got a yellow flag up for for a warning signs for uh, the Canadian Wildcats dropping two games in a row. Uh, my game here in Wichita Falls was an absolute, it was an absolute slugfest. Uh, Wichita Falls rider down most of the game, comes back, hangs on to their number two ranking in 5A Division II with a 28-24 win over Lubbock Coronado. Uh, the Raiders trailed for the good portion of the game for about three and a half quarters. They took the lead late, in the, uh, about halfway through the fourth quarter. Um, got an interception in the end zone to hold off a Coronado rally. And Mark Bendel and the Ryder Raiders improved to 3-0 with that 28-24 win over Lubbock Coronado. Uh, Riders battling some injuries right now. Um, their best, one of their better defensive linemen uh, dislocated his elbow last week. He was out uh, today. They think he'll be back by district play. But then in the first quarter, Texas Tech commit Anquan Willis goes down right there on the goal line with, a, with an injury. Uh, his status is unknown. But Ryder, you know, they could have hung their heads and, and packed it in against a good Coronado team. And they, they fought and fought and fought at home and come back with a 28-24 win over Coronado to improve to 3-0, likely to hang on to that number two ranking in 5A Division II behind the Argyle Eagles who got a big win over Grapevine tonight. So 
That wraps things up from Wichita Falls with my week three instant recap video. I'm going to head back to the house in Fort Worth and get a little sleep before I head to San Antonio in the morning.